Hello everyone. Today we are going to perform a practical on 6 bit, 6 -bit C PN sequence generator in the digital communication practical session. Yes. We have used a 6 bit shift register series. Here we can see there are 6, re six shift registers which are Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5 and Q6. They are all connected in series. Now the output of Q6 is connected to one of the input of the XOR gate. The other input of XOR gate is the output of Q1 shift register. The output of this XOR gate is being inverted via a NOT gate and is given to the Q1 series. Initially, all the stages of the PA sequence generator are zero. And we are taking the output from the shift register Q6. So the output of the first clock pulse would be zero. Now, in the second clock pulse, the content of the previous shift register is shifted out to the input of the other shift register. So the output of Q4 would be given to Q5, Q5 to Q6 and so on. Now, the output of Q6 and Q1 are exerted. Here, the output of Q1 is zero and Q6 is also zero. The exerting of these two bits is zero. Now this zero is being inverted via the NOT gate and is given to Q1. So now the output is Q1 would be one and the remaining bits would be zero. And the output would also be zero. Now again, the output of Q6 and Q1 are XOR and NOT. So one and zero will give XOR one and this output is given to the NOT gate. This will invert the bit that is one and now it will become zero. So the output is now zero and this one is shifted to the right. So this one is shifted to the Q2 that is it comes here and remaining all the stages are zero. Output remains zero. Similarly, we have obtained the remaining series. Now, this series is just for seven clocks. The length of the PN sequence is decided by the formula 2 raised to m minus 1, where m is the number of shift registers that we have used. Here, the length of the sequence would be 2 raised to 6 minus 1, which is 63. We have just shown the first seven outputs of it. Its remaining outputs are similarly obtained by the same logic. Let's have a look at the kit of this practical. Here we can see there is power supply and the clock generator. We can vary the frequency of this clock generator by this knob. Now we have shift register which are the basic building blocks of the PN sequence. 74175 is the IC that is being used here as the shift register. There are two of them used here and the connection is being made accordingly. The reset switch is used to reset the condition of all the flip-flops that is being used. This is the XOR gate and the NOT gate that we have just looked 5 minutes ago. Now let's have a look at the connections of the kit. Firstly, we can see a clock generator over here. We will take the its output and measure it on the DSO. Now we have connected the output of the clock generator to the DSO. As you can see here, it is a simple square wave. Using the cursor mode, we are uh, uh, actually seeing the frequency of this clock pulse. We have set the cursor accordingly. As you can see here, the time is 1 millisecond. Now, the frequency of this pulse would be 1 upon 1 millisecond, which is equal to 1 kilohertz. Moving on with the connection, the second connection is connecting the point A to the point B. And connecting the output of the clock to the clock input, as you can see over here. Now, the third and the last connection is connecting the output to the DSO. Now, we have connected the output of the PN sequence generator to the DSO. We have used two channels here. The first channel consists of the clock pulses 
and the second channel consists of the output of the PN sequence generator. Now we will stop this. As you can see, this is the clock signal and this is the PN signal. We will shrink it so that we can actually see the PN sequence. As you can see here, this is the PN sequence that, is, that we have obtained on the DSO. So, next part is that this PN sequence is generated in the form of ones and zeros. Let's zoom it a little bit. Okay, the first thing that we are going to do is measure the bit time of this PN sequence using the cursor mode. This small bit corresponds to a single bit, so we are going to measure its time. As you can see here, the time interval of a bit is 1 millisecond. Now, few moments ago, we calculated the output of the PN sequence generator via a particular logic. Now, taking this forward, we actually obtained this particular set of output. As you can see, the PN sequence will repeat after 63 output bits. We have taken the various observations from this experiment. Here are the total set of output that we have calculated using the previously used logic. We have taken these particular readings. Now, the formula for maximum length of the PN sequence is n is equals to 2 raised to n m minus 1. Here, m is the total number of shift register that we have used in this practical. We have used 6 in here. So, the formula would turn out to be n is equals to 2 raised to 6 minus 1, which is 63. Now, the total period of the PN sequence would be equal to the total number of bits in to the period of 1 bit. Now, the total number of bits is 63 and as we have already observed on the DSO, the bit interval is a 1 millisecond. So, 63 into 1 millisecond is equal to 63 milliseconds. So, the PN sequence will repeat itself after 63 milliseconds. Now, let's turn towards the properties. There are total three properties of PN sequence, <coughs> namely balance properties, auto correlation property, and run property. The first property, which is the balance property, states that the total number of ones and zeros in a period of a PN sequence are balanced. Now, the n, which is the total number of sequence, uh, is being odd in number. So, the total number of zeros is always one more than the total number of ones. As you can see here, the total number of ones are 31 and the total number of zeros are 32. These observations are taken up from this particular set of readings. Let's jump to the second property, which is autocorrelation property. The property states that the autocorrelation function of a PN sequence is binary value and periodic, which ultimately means that the PN sequence will repeat itself after a particular period of time. As I just told you, the PN sequence will have a period of 63 milliseconds. So, the PN sequence will repeat itself after 63 milliseconds. After 63rd clock bit, the PN sequence turns out to be 0, 0, 0, all zeros. Now, let's have a look at the run property. The run property states that among the runs of 1 and zeros in each period of maximum length sequence, one of, of the run of each kind are of length 1. Now see, there are in total 32 runs. The runs of zeros are 16 and that of runs of 1 are also 16. So let's consider the runs of zeros which is 16. Now the property states that one half of the runs would be of length 1. That means half of 16, that is 8. So there would be total 8 runs of zeros which are just single in number. Let's count them. This is the first, second, the third one, fourth, fifth, 
sixth, seventh, and this is the eighth. So the total number of single runs of zeros are eight. Similarly, one fourth of the total run of zeros, that is sixteen, that is four. So one fourth of it would be the runs of length two. That means there would be four such instances where a run of two has occurred in this whole series. Uh, let's count it. This is the first run of two zeros. The second run. The third run. And this is the fourth run. So there are four runs of zeros with half of having length two. Thus the run property is also verified. Now let's look at another property, which is which is the autocorrelation property. We are considering the autocorrelation correlation function R C of tau, which is given by this particular formula. Now substituting appropriate values in this formula, we get this table. Now plotting this table on the graph, we get the autocorrelation function property graph, which is of this kind. As you can see here, I have drawn the the spectrum of p n sequence. It looks like this. So let's observe this on the DSO. Now let's observe the p h d of p n sequence on the DSO. Here you can see the uh, output p n sequence. Now let's switch to the math menu. Select the hanging window. Now zoom it a little bit. Topic. As you can see, there are lobes created here. Now we will see the null frequencies using the cursor. As you can see, the first null occurs exactly around one kilohertz. Now we'll observe the second null. Here also, the second null occurs exactly around 2 kilohertz. That's it. Thank you for watching.